Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz and welcome to Quick Tip Thursday. Today's topic is going to be DJPEG versus DNoise. I'm going to give you a few tips on when to use them and what kind of artifacts and different types of distortions each one is going to be best for. And then I'll give you a little bit intro into each program so you can actually see the interface. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one for Denoise and JPEG are going to be using both at the beginning of your workflow. And if both are needed for one image, if you have really heavy D, uh, JPEG artifacts, use DJPEG before Denoise. I'm al almost always saying use Denoise first if you have heavy noise, but if you have to use both, use DJPEG first because it's going to allow you to get those really heavy artifacts out of there and then get into Denoise to do the smaller ones. So tip number two is just about what each one is used for. Uh, Denoise is going to be used for high ISO noise and can handle small amounts of JPEG compression artifacts. Some JPEG compression artifacts, and I'll show you those here in just a minute, do look very much like noise if you have very slight compression. If you have really high compression in your JPEG images, DJPEG is going to be invaluable. Um, it can ha also handle small amounts of image noise, but not the really high ISO noise that denoise is good for. So each one has its very specific use. Let's go ahead and take, some, take a look at uh, DJPEG here first. Let me close out of this. Now this is an image, um, I kind of wanted to give you a real life scenario. It, many times, a lot of people uh, shooting with the high-end cameras these days, they're not going to necessarily start with a JPEG image. They're going to start with a raw image and then actually go through the whole process of editing their image and only save JPEG uh, quality at the end of their workflow if they're saving for let's say a web or, or something that they have to actually send in to a show or submit. Many people, JPEG is still the number one type of image format that people are still using when it comes to web and sending over the internet, etc. But only saving once in that JPEG format is going to be best and going to give you the least amount of loss in your image. But uh, many times, such as if you're using Remask or some sort of background replacement, you'll grab an image off of the web already from a stock agency or some sort of uh, something that's already there, maybe a free stock agency. This is actually a small JPEG from iStock. So it has already been compressed once, but when you look at it, even up close at 300%, you don't see a lot of compression artifacts. Again, this is 300%, so at 100%, it looks very good. Now, I actually went ahead and saved a couple uh, types of images so you could really see where the JPEG artifacts start to show up. So let's go ahead and place that into here, into this layer stack, so you can see that. This first one um, I, was a let me place that. This first image is just saved once from my original background here, that original iStock image, at a compression quality of 12, which is going to be the highest quality. So you're not going to see a lot of visual change. Let's go in at 300% again. And if you click back and forth between them, now you're looking at the first layer. And now the top layer, you don't see a significant amount of change, and you always want to try to save at the highest quality, if, you, if possible. But there actually is quite a bit of change going on behind the scenes. One way that you can tell that change is going to be if I change my uh, layer to difference here. And again, you still can't see very much change. But let's go ahead and take that all the way up. There we go. Difference layer mode is going to show you the difference between the two layers. The black areas are where there are no difference whatsoever, and everything else, all the colors, is where there are differences. So this gives you an idea of where the difference is, even when you're saving at a compression quality of 12, 
for the first save, how much difference is actually occurring. Now this is very small amounts of compression artifacts. It's almost very noise-like. And this is something that denoise could be able to handle and you wouldn't necessarily need to go into DJPEG. Let's go ahead and go back. I'll go back to place. And instead now I'm going to place in a image that I saved one time at a compression quality of 6. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to get rid of this com first compression that we just looked at. Now this compression quality of 6, again I saved it once. Just going to take a look at that difference layer again. You can already start to see quite a few artifacts that are going to be showing up and if I take my layers or not my, my levels up all the way, you can really start to see some much heavier artifacts at a compression quality of 6. Even within the dark areas that weren't affected with that compression quality of 12, you start to see some blocking up and you can really see a difference here. Let me go ahead and get rid of these two layers one more time and I'm going to show you which image we're going to actually take in real quick. Go to place. This image here has been saved multiple times. Oops. Multiple times at low compression, just to give you an idea of how good DJPEG is. Let's go ahead and look at that difference between the two. Take that up. And now we're looking at some very heavy JPEG artifacts, and this is where DJPEG really shines. Our JPEG artifacts are going to look like this grid type of pattern, this blocking up, and then also you have a lot of uh, heavy mosquito noise around edges and color noise that are going to be coming out as well. So that's the layer we're going to take in today, but I definitely wanted to show you because a lot of people say, well, I don't really see JPEG artifacts. They are always there when you go through that compression. Let me go ahead and get rid of these two, and actually I'll just open up that other image, the heavy artifact image. Here we go. Make a quick background copy so we can see the difference after we get out of J DJPEG and hop on into DJPEG. DJPEG looks like many of our other interfaces with the preset panel over here on the left, the main image viewer in the right, and all of the adjustment tools and uh, viewing tools over here on the right. As you can see, when you take it into DJPEG, it starts up at 200%, so you can really see the JPEG artifacts that are occurring. And with this normal RGB mode that we're looking at, let's go in just a little bit more so you can actually see it on your screen. I hope you're able to really see all of that blocking up that's going on. And even around the edges of these flowers over here, a little bit more of this mosquito type noise and color noise up in the hair, how bad this really is up on her forehead. Now let's go back to 200%. And I'm just going to start off with a preset. I tend to like these presets over here. There's only five of them, but they're very good presets for JPEG artifacts. So highly compressed JPEG, that's what I know this is. So I'm going to start there. And immediately you start to see a softening up of those artifacts without softening the image. Here's before. Here's after. Let's go in a little bit more up to her hair. So you can see the forehead here. This is after, but here's before. With all of these lines and strong color, uh, colors coming out in these blocks, and here's after. It's not only smoothed the artifacts, it's also smoothed down the color difference that you see. Once you get to a point that you like with the presets, you can come over to the main adjustment area and just uh, play with it. If you want to actually reduce more artifacts, you can do that here with this top one. You can sharpen up your edges quite a bit. You have to watch out when you're dealing with really heavy artifacts like this because you will bring out a little bit more of that edge noise. Sharp radius, you can sharpen that up or take that down. The luminoise is going to work on actually this very small artifacts, um, the noise-like artifacts that are coming through. So this will help to 
clear up any other noise that you might see within the image. Color noise as well, that's going to help you. You have your preview modes to, within DJPEG to help work with your Luma noise and then the color noise as well so you can really see things that are going on. When you're in your color preview mode, you can really see those edges of the color and take those color edge radiuses down or up. I'm going to take it down for this particular image. There we go. And go back to normal. If I wanted to add a little bit of color or saturation to the image, I could do so here. And grain as well, which is great if you've taken out so much detail or so much of the artifacts that it starts to look a bit plastic and smooth. The monochromatic grain that can be added back in is going to give you a little bit more of a realistic type of image. So let's take a look really quickly at what we did. Let me go up to 300%. Here's before all the artifacts, all the blocking up that's going on, and after. I've kept the detail. Again, remember that we are at 300%. I've kept the detail and removed a ton of heavy JPEG artifacts. Here's before. You can see it all around these flowers and after. It's just completely disappeared from within these flowers. It's before and after. All right, so that is where you would use G, uh, DJPEG. As far as denoise, denoise again is going to handle really high ISO noise. Pop on into Photo Effects Lab and I'm going to open up a recent file here. There we go. Show you the difference. This is the original image, high ISO image. So if I go into 100%, you see exactly what's going on. Not only horrible luma noise, luminance noise, contrast noise, but also horrible color noise, color casts, and strong banding noise going on within this image. And taking it into denoise, I was able to keep the detail, remove the color, luma noise, make it still look like a good image, not like it's plasticky and fake kept serious amounts of detail within the flower and took out the color cast within the dark areas. Let me show you that one more time. Here's before and after. Now with denoise, let me take this original image in. You're going to have the same type of, here we go, same type of interface, but again, this is going to be specific for heavy noise. If I took this image in and it was a really highly compressed D, uh, JPEG as well, I would first go into DJPEG and then go into the denoise. Let me reset all here. Turn my auto brightness off. You have your presets over here and your preset panel on the left. You have your main preview area and all of your adjustments and preview modes and navigation tools over here on the right, just as you do in DJPEG. But with the noise removal, we have three tabs, noise reduction, detail recovery, and debanding, all to help you with different types of noise and then to help you recover that detail. And I'm not going to go through this specific workflow, but uh, if you would like an introduction into denoise, we do have that available on YouTube channel as well as an introduction to, DJ, to DJPEG that it goes much more into the programs and shows you exactly how each one is going to work and how each slider works. Uh, Linda said, uh, asked a good question. Uh, I know Stephanie already answered it, but I wanted to make sure that everybody heard it. She says, am I understanding correctly that DJPEG is only for JPEGs, not raw images? Does that mean raw images don't have those artifacts? Um, correct, Linda. If you bring in your raw image and you continually save as an uncompressed TIFF, uh, you're, no, you're not going to see JPEG artifacts start. You're only going to see these artifacts come as you compress your image over and over again. Now, if you are using a TIFF file format with a lot of compression, which I'm not sure why um, you would, but uh, that is going to also bring in some um, artifacting like you're seeing here. But Mainly, DJPEG was developed specifically for these highly compressed JPEGs that you're going to be seeing, um, whether it's 
pulling an image from the web, pulling an image, um, a photo source that you don't know how many times it's been compressed, and phone images, and perhaps you have some older images in your image library that you saved as a JPEG multiple times and lost the original file, something along those lines where you're going to need the, the DJPEG to kind of save and bring back the image so you're able to continue to process it or make it look acceptable to, to you. So I hope that helps. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Thank you so much for joining me for Quick Tip Thursday, and I hope this gives you an idea of when JPEG artifacts are going to be best used by DJPEG versus the noise in your image, which is something completely different. And Denoise will be wonderful at handling those really high ISO uh, noisy images, whereas DJPEG is going to be really good at handling the really high compressed artifacts that you start to see, or highly compressed DJPEGs where you start to see a lot of artifacts. All right, thanks everyone. Have a great day.